Welcome to our service of spiritual communion here in St Mary's at Bletchingley. I'm the Reverend Sister Phaedra Pamphlon Green and I'm the Rector here. It's very really good that you're joining us for this spiritual communion. Now we're in the, on that Sunday between the Ascension of Christ and Pentecost. So we're looking at what does it mean to be left here on earth to carry on with the work that Christ has already started that he wants us to carry on with. Our organist Ian has recorded some hymns for us again brilliantly uh, and our choir has also recorded some hymns virtually. Christopher is reading from us and uh, Oliver is going to be leading us in our prayers. So we begin our service by singing our first hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise.
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Christ has gone up on high, leading captivity captive and bringing gifts for all. As we prepare ourselves to meet him there in the courts of heaven, let us call to mind our many failures and sins. Lord Jesus, you have suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption, yet we have forgotten your pain and stayed in the realm of the evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life, yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and entry into the fullness of his presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his own image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so the prayer that collects our thoughts and prayers together on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so I'm going to hand over to Christopher as he reads from the first book of Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen and establish you. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is taken from the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. 
I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them and now I am no longer in the world but they are, they are in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father protect them in, in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ Thank you, Christopher. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is a, an old joke, but always good to say again. One Easter, a priest and a taxi driver both died and went to heaven. St Peter was at the pearly gates waiting for them both. Come with me, said St. Peter to the taxi driver. And the taxi driver did as he was told and followed St. Peter to the mansion. It had everything you could imagine, from a bowling alley to an Olympic-sized pool. Oh, my word, thank you, said the taxi driver. Next, St. Peter led the priest to a rough old shack with a bunk bed and a little old television set. Wait there a minute, St. Peter. I think you are a little mixed up, said the priest. Shouldn't I be the one with the mansion and the swimming pool? After all, I was a priest. I went to church every day and preached God's word. Yes, that's true, said St. Peter. But during your sermons, people slept. When the taxi driver drove, everyone prayed. Well, how are we to be followers of Christ and make him known to the world around us and lead others to him in prayer? Especially now, when the world is facing real challenges to our faith. Do we send people to sleep when we talk about our faith? Or worse than that, do people think, oh no, what is she on about again? Do our words and actions direct people onto a path that leads them to God or away from God? Now, this is the Sunday after Ascension Day, one of the nine days of prayer, the Novena, between Ascension Day and Pentecost. Ascension is the day when Christ ascended to heaven, finally leaving his disciples and the world forever. Jesus' disciples had got used to him being around, but now they must learn to live without him. He's gone from them. But this isn't the end. The ascension of Christ had to happen before the coming of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit comes, Christ will be present to all his disciples throughout the world for all time. Before Jesus ascended, he gave his disciples instructions. He told them to wait, to pray, to receive the Holy Spirit and spread the good news throughout the world. They're good instructions for us too. Now, I don't need to tell any of you how difficult it can be to wait. Wait for restrictions to lift. That's a hard one, isn't it? Waiting for a hug from your loved ones. Again. 
waiting to go to the pub, the cinema, or even to come into church. Waiting is not easy. Waiting for the bus when we have to get to work can be frustrating. Waiting for Christmas when we are children is exciting. Waiting for a child to be born can be both exciting and nerve wracking. Waiting for results from a scan or a blood test can be frightening and anxious. Waiting for an operation can be hopeful, but can fill us with complete fear. During these times of waiting, what do we do? Some might talk a lot, others go silent. Some eat chocolate, others drink copious amounts of tea, whilst some might drink copious amounts of wine, or both. <laughs> but what do you do when you are waiting to die? I hope none of us are facing that reality or that we are going through that reality with a loved one right now. But the fact is that Jesus did go through this. And we see what he does in our gospel reading. Jesus speaks to his father in heaven and he prays. He prays for his followers, he prays for their salvation, their protection and their ministry. But he also prays for those who will follow them, in other words, us. Jesus talks to God about those that have followed him and speaks of their achievements. Now we know that the disciples were not that great, they hadn't always understood, they had denied him, been selfish, didn't always trust him, and they didn't really achieve very much. But Jesus says, I have been glorified in them. What an amazing thing to be said about them. Jesus knew that he would leave them and leave them with the work he had started. They would, and those after him would, go on to glorify him for the next 2,000 years. And this is so encouraging because at this point, the disciples are not perfect. They are human beings with flaws and hang-ups and misunderstandings and characters. They would bring glory to Christ, not because they were perfect, but because they were imperfect and because they knew that they could only do what was required of them through Christ's strength. They trusted in Christ their Saviour, which in turn glorifies Christ's work and honours him. They would also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The early Christians trusted in their future with Christ if they were loved, saved, and had eternal life. They were strong, courageous, and fearless. Why? Because if death is not the end, if death is a gateway to eternity, what is there to fear? This was unique to Christians. We know that the early church grew fundamentally because of the way Christians treated each other, and the community around them. The, early Christ, the earliest Christians spent most of their time in works of mercy, which baffled the pagans around them. As far as this new Christian community was concerned, God did not demand ritual sacrifices. He wanted his love expressed on earth in deeds of compassion. Interestingly, it was in the middle of a pandemic that this love became tangible. During the plague in Alexandria, when nearly everyone else fled, the early Christians put their own lives at risk by caring for the sick, washing the sick, offering water and food and consoling the dying. Their care was so extensive that the Emperor Julian tried to copy the church's welfare system. And apparently, it failed because the Christians were motivated by their faith and their love for God and their fellow human beings, not 
out of duty. The first Christians not only took care of their own, but also reached out far beyond themselves. Their faith led to a better sort of pandemic, a pandemic of love. Their basic nursing care reduced mortality. Their simple provisions of food and water allowed the sick to recover through nourishment. They were regarded as having the strength and courage to risk their own lives to save others and seemed less likely to die as well. Now, these early Christians became, in words of one scholar, a whole force of miracle workers to heal the dying. Doesn't this remind you of our NHS now? We've just celebrated the bicentenary of Florence Nightingale's birth. Much of our modern healthcare owes its foundation on her diligence, her reform and code of practice. And it's no secret that she was motivated by her Christian beliefs and spirituality. In fact, at 17, Flo felt called by God into service, and that service would be health care. The early Christians and countless others who followed them, and followed Florence Nightingale being one of them, changed the world around them because of their trust in Christ's saving power for them and their desire to glorify him. Our world has been turned upside down. People's normal structures, their props and routines, relationships have also been turned on their head and they are looking for something else to fix their hope on. People across the world are looking for an answer and instead of rejecting God, are actively searching him out. Florence Nightingale knew that a person's road to recovery was about meeting the needs of their whole being, spiritual, physical and emotional. Today, we know that anxiety and stress are helped when physical, intellectual, emotional, social and spiritual needs are met. So it's no surprise that people are wanting to light a candle here in church, that they want to pray and they watch the YouTube services. And yet it has come as a huge surprise, it seems, to some sectors of the media. But where do people go if they want to know about God and Christ? They go to those those of us who are following Jesus today. But where do people go if they want to know about God and Christ? Well, they go to those of us who are following Jesus today. And those of us who are followers of Christ today can take encouragement from those first disciples. We are not perfect. We get it wrong and muck it up. We are human. When Christ ascended into heaven, he did not abandon the church. He believed he left it in safe hands with them and us, oh yes, and help from the Holy Spirit. All we need is a faith that is rooted in Christ's saving power, a faith that desires his glory, not ours, a faith that desires to serve him, and not ourselves. And if we do, we will be able to meet the needs of those who are searching for God, wherever they are. And Jesus prayed that his followers would know God as intimately as he knew God. The early church got that. It grew and spread by love, with love and in love. We can be the same. But we can only demonstrate that kind of selfless love if we know that selfless love ourselves. Do we know how much God loves us? Do we know that Christ is with us, in the midst of us, wherever we are, loving us? I hope you do. Because if you do know how much God loves you, 
then I hope it's through your acts of love and charity that you bring others into a relationship with God and not through your bad driving like the taxi driver at the beginning of the talk. Amen. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Our intercessions will be led by Oliver. Let us join our prayers with the intercessions of our Ascended Saviour, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Spirit. The response to the bidding, Lord, hear us, is Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us. We pray for your Church, that even while we are physically apart, we may remain your body. In this benefice, in this diocese, in this country, and throughout the world. Keep us faithful to our calling, that we may witness to your glory by declaring and practicing your saving love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, we pray for your world, that it indeed may be subject to your gentle rule. We pray for our political leaders, that they may exercise good judgment in releasing us, however gradually, from the social effects of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. And we pray for those situations which remain in the background at this time, for the Holy Land and all its people, for the broken countries of Syria and Yemen, for political upheaval in Venezuela, for all who suffer the effects of cyclone in India and Bangladesh, and for the amelioration of rising tensions between the world's great powers and the increase in deadly weapons that accompanies it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, glorified Son of Man, who has drawn our humanity into the life of God, we pray for all who live in the villages of Bletchingley and Nutfield that the light of your glory may shine through the clouds that hide you from sight and touch their lives with fortitude, with courage and with hope. We hold before you especially the people and work of the Bletchingly United Charities Hardship Fund and the Henry Smith Charity in Nutfield. We pray for our brothers and sisters in need, distress or sorrow for all who suffer from COVID-19 and those who care for them, for all who are lonely, for all who are bereaved by the cutting short of life, for all who have lost their jobs or fear their loss, for all who can no longer make ends meet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to glory through your death and resurrection, surround with your saints and angels those who have died, trusting your promises in doubt or anxiety or simply bereft of faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, Lord over all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, we ask you to hear our own prayers, made in the quiet of our own hearts, 
and bring them to the Father's throne. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Christ, keep your church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at your feet, for you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer those we are with a sign of Christ's peace, and also those who we aren't with a sign of Christ's peace as we prepare to share in our spiritual communion and share the peace, we will sing the head that once was crowned by thorns. joy receive our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving keep us in the love of Christ and bring us to the vision of his glory through the same Jesus Christ our Lord amen the Lord is here his spirit is with us lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great high priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit, he is the one who has gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room while they awaited his promised gift. The life-giving spirit of Pentecost, 
Therefore, all creation yearns with eager longing as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Please share your spiritual communion along with me as the choir sings, All Heaven Declares.
eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I do hope you have a very good week. It's going to be a hot one, I think, so don't get sunburnt. Um, and if you do go outside, keep your distance from people. Keep well, keep safe, and, and do get in touch if there's anything at all that you need. Our final hymn is crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavy anthem drowns all music but his own.
May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.